Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to part 10.5, I guess you could say. This is Clive Barker's Hellraiser Annual, which was released in 2012. Now you may know, guys, that I've been doing this series here on the channel, which spanned 33 parts. Now, what Boom Comics did was also fill in the gaps between certain elements of the story. And they did this in the Hellraiser annuals. Now this is, like I said, from the best of my knowledge, between part 10 and part 11. This sort of fills in the gaps. So if you want to go back and refresh your memory, I'll leave part 10 down below, as well as part 11. Watch that, then watch this, then watch part 11. But that being said, let's dive right into it. We open in the pit of hell. Damnation is a motherfucker. The stench, the pain, the noise, the endlessness of it all. It's unbearable. We see the damned souls just standing there. This is their punishment for all of eternity. But the worst thing about it is remembering... We hone in on a man, and we see his life. I had it all. The perfect job. I don't care who died. You're not getting the day off. Access to the finer things in life. And the perfect wife. Don't stop. You're like that baby. Whom I always came home to when I got bored. We see him walking towards the door, and... His wife inside. Or so I thought. His wife was having an affair. I know I wasn't a saint, but believe me when I tell you. Baby, baby, put the gun down, please. You can't know how you'll react until the moment happens. By then, it's already too late. The gun goes off. It was most assuredly not the trial of the century. Two people died and nobody gave a shit. We find the defendant not guilty. The jury stands up and gives their verdict. After a short stint in a padded room, I was free. One tie, satin. One men's billford, leather. One wedding band, gold. Free to finish what I started. Do you know what it's like to hate your memories? I was found innocent by reason of insanity. And that was then, he says as he stands up and hangs himself. This time, there was no trial, no judge, no jurors. I'm guilty. There's no escaping that, but it doesn't stop me. It doesn't stop any of us. It has to hear us. God is love, after all, so he has to hear us, right? The man stands there in the pit of hell, and a light shines above him. Please, I'm sorry, please. Oh, he notices. He notices the light shining on his face. I knew it. I knew he'd hear me. And he gets elevated, taken, he ascends. Is this heaven? Not remotely. Are you God? A familiar voice rings out and we see him. You're getting warmer. It's Elliot Spencer. These are the events that occurred when Elliot Spencer opened the gateway, the portal between hell and earth, before he became that immortal deity in the sky. And now we flash forward to now. Blood erupts from the floor. We see a hand rip itself through. The flesh begins to form. <laughs> I'm back. I'm... Who the hell are you? 
The body asks Elliot Spencer. And who is the body but Frank? Frank Cotton. Hello, Frank. I'm Elliot. You look... Oh, familiar. We met. My name is Captain Elliot Spencer. I'm a victim of hell. He says as he chucks a bucket of blood on Frank. I suppose you could say we're kindred spirits. He reaches down and puts a cuff on Frank's ankle. Wait, are you... Come now, Frank. You've always been a dangerous man. Even before you could suck my life out just by touching me. This is just a temporary precaution. I'll be back tomorrow with more food. And an offer I don't think you'll want to refuse. And now we flash back to a week ago. Take it from me. I'm doing you a favor. Elliot says as he shoots a man in the head. Who are these people? Why are they dressed like... They're Cenobitists, Tiffany. Cultists who worship the Cenobites. A week ago, Elliot Spencer was working with Tiffany. Which rather misses the point. I always relished killing them back in the old days. Cenobite wannabes? I don't know what that means. Spencer! Where the fuck were you? We needed you out there. You could have got us all killed. Theodore, if I'd stayed, we would have all been killed. He was about to solve. He picks up a lament configuration. This. I could feel it. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Tiffany, do the honours. Tiffany brings a hammer down. One more of Lamartian's puzzles down. One step closer to sealing the gates of hell. Forever. If that's your goal, you know you're doomed to failure then. Excuse me? Theodore turns. Oh, come now. Are you really that thick? You don't see what you're missing. The Cenobites come through portals opened by the Toymaker's puzzles. But you know that in hell, the Cenobites aren't alone. Oh, the people the Cenobites are torturing? The Labyrinth's prisoners don't need the puzzles to come back. All it takes is blood sacrifice. Blood spilled on the place they died. Well, that means we've got a rescue mission too, right? We can save the souls the Cenobites took. All we have to do is find the places the demons took them prisoner and... Of all the stupid ideas I've heard today... What is your problem, Elliot? Kirsty told Tiffany the reason the labyrinth exists. To punish bad people. Perhaps some of the people there aren't guilty by your standards. But think of that thug, Frank Cotton. Isn't the world a better place without him in it? And how many Frank Cottons are down there, do you suppose? We flash back to Frank wielding a blade. We see him sucking the life from corpses, the events that transpired that set everything in motion. Or think of Julia Cotton, my Cenobium, my old associates, and I, we took her to the labyrinth, and she converted. She came back to Earth as a worshipper of Leviathan, doing his will. I'm sure you remember how that went, Tiffany. And even if these were good, decent people wrongly imprisoned, the only way the souls trapped in the labyrinth can come back to Earth 
is by feeding on human blood and flesh. They don't eat normal food anymore. They eat you. Fuck. We try a jailbreak, and we end up with a bunch of vampire zombies who might also be depraved criminals who might also worship hell. Zombies. Half the time I have no idea what you two are saying. We see Tiffany and Theo arguing. Would you lay off him? Tiffany, he's dangerous. We needed him covering us, not saving our lives from Cenobites we weren't prepared for. Abandoning us. Abandoning his post without warning. Jesus, what's that guy ever done to inspire such faith in you? Leave it alone, Theo. No, really. These are our lives on the line here, and who knows how many others. If there's some good reason you've got for trusting him. He saved me, okay? He saved me. Back when he was a Cenobite, he saved my life. Uh, what? That's hard to swallow. I opened a puzzle box. And it was when I was, I, w I was out of my mind, but I opened the box. And Elliot, the Cenobite he used to be, he spared me. He saw I was innocent and he called off his soldiers. Elliot's Cenobite changed his mind later, but Elliot saved me from him and then he saved me from the man who killed my mother. I thought he gave his life to save me. We can see Elliot Spencer and Chenard facing one another in a flashback. Not a team player. Too used to giving orders to take them. Theo, he's lost everything. He was in hell for almost a hundred years. Everyone he ever knew is long dead. He's got nowhere to go. He's lost and there's no one to help him. The general with no soldiers. How sad. That's why he needs our help. Elliot Spencer overhears everything. And storms off. We see Elliot as he walks through the streets. I opened a puzzle box. I was hungry for something. Something I didn't understand. I thought the box would give me what I wanted. Instead, I lost decades of my life to hell. The world I knew is gone. I look around and I barely recognize what's replaced it. So many changes, so much new technology. And we flash forward to Frank Cotton chained to the floor. So, why should I stick my neck out for you? I mean, have you seen the state of my neck lately? I was hoping to appeal to your sense of... Revenge. If you agree to help me, we can restore your human body and destroy the portal in this room so the Cenobites won't find you. So, where does little Kirsty fit into this? She's the new head torturer in hell. Well, that's... Interesting. If you want help fighting hell and curse thee, he says as he stands up, I'm your man, and he holds out his hand. Oh, yeah, sorry. Forgot you might think I was trying to suck the life out of you. That's quite all right. Now, let's put some more meat on those bones. We see where Elliot Spencer had been lurking. It's the house. That all too familiar house where everything started. And Frank looks at him out the window. He tries to pull off the chain. He's not used to being the captor. And he rips it off, severing his ankle in the process. But remember, this is no longer the Frank Cotton we knew as a human. He pushes his ankle back in place looks out the window and drops the chain. I told you, I remembered business I had to take care of. Urgent business. 
Well, I'll be back when I'm done, won't I? Honestly, Tiffany. Look, I've got to go. I'll phone when my business is wrapped up. Which button turns it off again? Bloody stupid thing. Bloody. He looks down. Bloody. He sees footprints. A hand reaches up behind him. Frank. Hand goes in his neck. He cries out in pain. Elliot Spencer has been drained somewhat. I'm... You're alive. The years you and your friends tortured me. You think I'd kill you that quickly? He pulls out a gun. Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! None of that. Elliot, you and I, we're gonna have some fun. He picks up a bucket of blood, bathes in it, showers in it even. Ah, that feels better. Almost back to my old self now. So, Elliot. Elliot gets up, he's running. Oh, where are you going, Elliot? The doors are locked, and you can barely stand up. You're embarrassing yourself. He runs through a door. Hide and seek. <laughs> I played this with Kirsty here, too. You shouldn't have mentioned that she's the new boss in hell, by the way. I mean, how stupid do you think I am? I'll admit, it took me a little while to figure out your voice isn't resonant the way it used to be. But you tell me there's a new pinhead, and you don't think I'm going to wonder what happened to the old one? You got me wrong, Elliot. I don't want revenge. Oh, I'll take it. If the demon who used to torture me shows up all weak and vulnerable and human, right when I need a new skin, that's what I call poetic justice. But really, I just want to be left alone. I'm a simple guy. Now, it's my turn to offer you a deal. You stop being so uptight and British and get down on your knees and beg me for mercy. Elliot Spencer's grabbed a knife. And I'll kill you gently. Think about it, Elliot. That's more than you ever would have done for... Ah, me! He says as he gets stabbed in the eye. Elliot wields his blade. He hacks Frank's guts open. <sighs> it's over, finally. <laughs> finally, I can just die. And be done with it. You stupid git. Where do you think your soul's going to end up if your new body dies? Right on top of a portal to hell. <sighs> Stop looking down your fucking nose at me. You've got to get out of hell, free card. But do you run and hide like a smart man? No. You get a second chance and you squander it. Trying to fight hell and you call me stupid. You're damned, Elliot. <coughs> you're damned and you're stupid. <coughs> and you're alone. You'd have to be desperate to try and get help. From me. Elliot stomps on Frank's face. Go to hell, Frank. See you there, Elliot. And there, as Elliot Spencer picks up his belongings to leave, we see the events that transpired, everything that led down this pathway. And Elliot Spencer hears Frank's voice. You're damned and you're stupid. And you're alone. And he picks up the phone. Tiffany. And my business fell through. I'm coming back to France and I, I hope you've still got room for me on the team.